All right, um, welcome to this uh, brief discussion that I want us to hear. Um, this discussion is motivated by a number of students who have approached me wanting me to do a video on the Jackie Berra test. Now, as I explained earlier, uh, much of what we are doing with classical linear regression analysis, or in fact all of it, depends on the normality assumption. Uh, we have made assumptions that the error term is normally distributed with a mean of zero and standard deviation and variance of sigma squared, which is almost elastic. Now, what we want to do is, let's say you have run a regression and later on you generate estimated residuals from that regression and um, I suppose you, you recall how we do that. Uh, for purpose of completeness, I can just state that very quickly. So it's essentially your residuals here, your estimated residuals are equal to your y minus what, okay? So the difference between the y you have in the data and the y you generate with your estimated regression is your estimated residuals. Now, now this variable called estimated residuals is the one we want to test to check if it is normally distributed. Now a normal distribution has two chief properties. These are that this skewness is equal to zero and ketosis is equal to three where ketosis here is a measure of the a tallness or flatness of a distribution so now the jack Berra test makes the assumption that the norm the, the the error term here measured by estimated residuals satisfies this classical linear regression model assumption that it has a skewness of zero, which means it is symmetrical about a point zero. If you look at the histogram, you can see that zero here divides the distribution into these observations in the negative region and in the positive region. So now, if this is satisfying what we're talking about, we should have a bell shape so a bell shape with very thin tails but what you see here is that actually we have a peak then we have the distribution descending with a tail to the far right okay now so what we want to do is to use the Jackie Berra test to get out this test. So the Jackie Berra test requires you first of all, sure, I don't know what I pressed, and now my, my, my PowerPoint is not responding. So you need to state your now you now must say that residuals are normally normally distributed which alternatively is the same thing as saying skewness is equal to zero and ketosis is equal to three you can state it the, the other way around, or you can state it this other way around. The meaning is the same. The alternative will say residuals are not normally distributed, which is the same thing as saying S not 
equal to zero. It could be negative, it could be positive. Um, K not not equal to three. Okay. Uh, let me create some space for myself by reducing the font size here. Let's put it at say sixteen perhaps. Right. So 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 these this is uh, the these are the two hypotheses you must state the now and the alternative now obviously you have to find the critical values now the jb itself follows a chi a chi squared distribution with two degrees of freedom and some chosen alpha at which you want to carry out the test. Now, so you must find the critical chi squared to, let's say now you're doing that at 5%, which is 0 0.05, give you 5%. Now, and let's find whatever we get then then we are going to also calculate our chi squared observed which is your jb statistic your jb statistic requires us to say the sample size by your ketosis squared sorry what am i saying let me just come down here where I have the formula equal to. So what we want here is to take our skewness, which is given there is 1.5. We square it, we divide by 6. For this n, we put the number of observations. For this ketosis here, we put the measure there. Subtract 3, then we square and we divide by 23. Now, if we are to do that, we are going to have here, um, that will be 1.5 squared over 6. Okay, we have, we must have here 50, which is our N, open bracket. Plus, let's have the other fraction there. Um, this is going to be, let me put some brackets there. A square, then here it's going to be, I'm just going to round up, that's 6.7 minus 3 squared, everything over 24. Now, if you solve this, and you use your calculator to find the answer. Let me just get to my calculator quickly. You should get... Uh, where am I? Um, you should get something like 47 point... Let me just do that very quickly. A uh, 1.5 squared divided by 6 right plus 6.7 minus 3 squared right that divided by 24 uh, multiplied by 50 which is the sample size you get 47 point two seven all right that's what you get you can see that here except that we have rounded up some things here um but it's essentially the same number this is 47.25 and we got 47.5 so so that's how you calculate it but we have to find our 
our critical value and we must state our decision criterion here now if our jb is greater than our chi squared critical we reject h h naught okay h naught now let's go to the tables and find our critical value here is your chi squared here are the degrees of freedom here are the p-values we are working with five percent so we're going to look for five percent we only have two degrees of freedom in the Jackie Berra test because these are the two restrictions imposed. We have imposed the restriction that skewness must, skewness must be zero and ketosis must be three. So every time you get out the Jackie Berra test, it, all, it only has two degrees of freedom, nothing more, nothing less. All right, so now let's come here and find out 5%, so let's keep scrolling down. 5% would be here. And this is one degree of, degree of freedom, two degrees, three degrees, four degrees, like that. So the table is continuing going there, but uh, um, because it can't fit in one page, the next page was put on a different, uh, was put there without labeling the degrees of freedom here. So that's the first row is one, second row is two, that's the row we want. And this is the degree of freedom, the, 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 the critical value we are interested in is 5.99. So we come here, we write 5.99, okay? So now according to our decision, if the JB, which is this, is greater than the critical, which is that, we must reject H0. So clearly here, you see that, that what the decision rules say is what the outcome we have before us says. So we can reject H0 here. And of course, conclude that the residuals are not normally distributed. Okay. Um, residuals are not normally distributed. So you reject this thing at 5%. Now, if you were using p values, you can see that this p value here is so, so, so small less than even a fraction of a percent so that means we have very very strong evidence against the null hypothesis which is exactly the conclusion we have here 47.27 is far into the shaded region and that's what this 0, 0.000 is also saying so that's how you carry out the jackie Berra test i hope this is going to be very helpful